So everybody, welcome to my Golf Tips live show today. Um, I'm looking forward to answering any questions that you might have, be it regarding any of my single plane videos that I've produced, my single plane method to set up for impact golf swing, uh, any other golf techniques or equipment questions, uh, anything you might think to ask, you can just type it in the comments box on the side and I have my iPad set up here to the side and I will be checking that for questions. I'm going to talk a little bit first about what you can do in this time uh, if you're stuck at home like I am where you can't really go out much, uh, how you can work on your game anyway and keep improving. If you can go to the golf course and give some of these ideas of simplifying your golf swing a chance and my goal in teaching is to help people improve as quickly as possible and I do that through in most cases altering your setup position to make it easier for you to hit great shots and so uh, those who aren't familiar with my setup for impact golf swing uh, the basic concept is all golf swings at impact Bring the wrist into an uncocked position so the club at impact will always have this orientation with at least the trailing arm to the elbow so some might be in a little bit more some more extended but they're always going to have this orientation it's never like this through impact even though people set up here the obvious problem with that should be that the change that takes place from setup to impact is changing the location of the club head relative to the trailing arm and elbow especially. And so you need to compensate then for that. I equate it to if I had to hit, if I have to hit this ball here, uh, but I'm forced to set up over here and then I have to step in and hit it, uh, that, that's obviously gonna be more difficult than if I can set up to the ball in a good position closer to where I need to be at impact. And so working towards simplifying and customizing it for each individual brings much faster success to golfers than the cookie cutter approach where everybody has to try to swing uh, exactly to match a model swing. So everybody has to have the hands on the club exactly the same. Even if they have 50 years of experience doing it another way with the hands uh, possibly in a stronger position or a weaker position uh, or what have you. The fact is that if you've been playing with a stronger grip for 10 years and all of a sudden you're forced to go to a neutral grip, you're not going to have much success. I've never seen anybody do it quickly. I've seen a lot of people work at stuff like that for one or two or three years without improving. But I also see a lot of people uh, using concepts or trying to do things in their golf swing that don't make a lot of sense, uh, such as trying to keep their feet flat on the ground uh, through impact. I've done it myself. I've been there. I've taught golf for 34 years, so since 1986, uh, back when I turned pro, and I've gone through a lot of different conventional swings, and you can see that all on my website. I don't really want to go into all that, uh, but I've worked with some of the top instructors, and I was lucky enough in... 1996 to learn about Bo Norman and his unique way of swinging a golf club, which led me on a journey towards simplification. Um, I don't try to swing like Mo Norman. I don't teach his swing. I do teach some things that I have learned from Mo Norman, and uh, some things are very similar in my method, and some things are very different. And I like to have a much more uh, relaxed and natural athletic motion to provide the most distance and accuracy and consistency for every individual instead of trying to exactly match what he did. It's also similar to the swing of Bryson DeChambeau. So I'm gonna check the comments in a section. If, if there's any problem with the sound or video, let me know. Um, in the broadcast yesterday, uh, some people said the video froze and it came out good on playback. So you can see a, a replay of that is on my channel here. And so, it would be a streaming issue. So this is streaming at high definition. So you can always change that setting. I think you click the little gear thing at the bottom of the video uh, and you can make it standard definition. Uh, so which is probably better. You won't see me as clearly then. 
So let's take a look. Hey, Dale, keep hitting fade with the driver, three wood, and seven iron. Um, what uh, type of swing are you using, Dale? Are you using a single plane swing or a conventional swing? Um, let me know what type of swing you're using, and then we can talk a little bit about it. Uh, but mostly uh, what I see with uh, people who are fading or slicing the ball, obviously uh, the club face is going to be open relative to the path at impact. And so even if you're set up square at impact, the face is open. So very often that can be grip related. Um, I know that a lot of people who set up conventionally uh, are – because of the hands being low and the trailing hand on top of the club, when you come into impact, the trailing arm tends to want to get under a little bit the grip and what happens. So the club face goes from here to here. So I would have you trying to, okay, I got it. So you're single plane. So what I would be doing, even single plane, I see a lot of people, the, the big thing that I see is they're not getting the alignment of the club here with the trailing arm and setup. So you really need to check that first to make sure that it is an alignment. And I know in the beginning, so this is, that would be perfect. What I just showed there and what I'm showing there, that's perfect. But I see this a lot that it's down and so it's going to end up coming in open. You're also uh, checking the trailing hand grip to make sure it's not too much on top of the grip this way. But also if you're forcing yourself in a leading hand grip position, uh, that's say neutral or has the back of the hand towards the target, what you could try if the alignment of the club is on plane with your trailing arm, you could try taking the leading hand and turning it just slightly over so the thumb of the leading hand is a little bit away from the target more. That'd be a slightly stronger position. I would also be looking at the setup position having a little bit more tilt away from the target to make sure, because if you are set up more conventionally with a little bit of tilt here, the problem is when you come into impact, this motion of having more tilt tends to also open the club face. So if you set up with the hips a little bit over and a little bit more tilt, and then make sure the hands, the orientation of the hands and arms are correct, uh, then make some swings. Uh, you can see my complete learning program here on YouTube. Uh, you can see all the drills that I have you do, and I would start small working with those drills and trying to make sure that the club face is getting squared up. If you go too far in one direction, too much tilt, uh, too strong or too much under with the trailing arm, uh, you start to actually hook the ball. So um, try those things. Um, also, you check out my membership on the website. It allows you to also send in videos for my review, and I can get you coached a little bit better, obviously, if I see what you're doing. But those, that's what I would be looking for. Hi, Ayaz. Yes, yes. Um, I have a very inexpensive membership on my website at learninggolf.tv. It does allow you to send in videos through the free V1 Golf app, which is available on uh, iOS and Android. And they get a lot of people sending in videos. It also gives you access to my complete learning program as well as practice sessions. I'm working on a series of 21 practice sessions where you can really practice along with me. And a lot of it starting out is working with short swings, learning the proper transition, uh, but the drills take you through step by step. As you see on my YouTube channel, I've actually shared my entire learning program on YouTube, uh, and uh, you'll find those videos you put in single plane complete learning program. You'll see it's like a 56 minute to 58 minute video, and it's also broken into pieces. So if you find, if you look for drills one through six and ball striking drills and so on, uh, you go ahead and those are on YouTube and they're more organized on the website, of course, and that allows you to also send in video for my review. It's a fairly simple program and that's my goal is to offer the fastest improvement possible through setup and doing some drills then to work on 
improving impact and making impact as good as we can. Hey, Joe. So do you advocate changing ball position with different clubs or do you believe it should stay constant? Also, do you reference ball position to feet or upper body? So yeah, I would be, I would be looking at ball position has to normally be variable. Uh, some people playing same length irons can use the same ball position because all of their clubs are the same length. But even with the same length system, if we want to hit a ball higher, we need to move it forward in the stance. And if we need to hit a ball lower, we need to move it back in the stance. In most cases, it's going to be the easiest way to go about doing that. Let me just move over. And I reference it uh, relative to my feet generally. And again, say if you have a very wide stance, which I really don't advocate because it, it restricts term, but if you did, uh, the amount as far as saying how many inches would be difficult. So I'm looking at the center of the stance would be where I would be playing a normal wedge shot. So uh, if I had, I had a wedge here, but if I was hitting a wedge shot, it would be more uh, generally in the center, but I'll play some wedge shots back in the stance where I would also then open the stance because if the ball position gets back a little bit, we really need to open the stance uh, to be able to hit it and swing towards the target. Here's a wedge. So, so with a wedge, I'd be pretty much in the center of the stance here. Almost always, I would never really play a wedge uh, forward. But when you get into the eight iron, it's going to be just slightly forward of that. And if you're going through impact uh, the way uh, that I teach with, which is really what all the tour players are doing, where we have a very shallow angle of approach and we've slowed the rotation of the club face through impact because we have the grip leading and the body turning through the shot, the ball position isn't as vital uh, as far as hitting the ball straight as it is with if you're early releasing it. So as we get into longer clubs, then the ball moves slightly farther forward. So if I went into a six or seven iron, it's six iron, I'm gonna play about one third of the way. So, so this is one thirds, two thirds, here's middle and two thirds. And in this area, nobody can play a ball and that does it exactly in an exact position every time. And I'm really looking for iron shots starting with the wedge center. And as clubs get longer, it moves just slightly forward. So if I get to a three or four iron, which most people don't have anymore, uh, it's moving up close to the, to the left heel, say two or three inches inside. A uh, fairway wood as well, it's more to the left. And then the driver, of course, off the left heel. Uh, you need to kind of experiment and see what works for you. And part of my teaching, I have you when you're doing the drills, I'll have you making practice swings and seeing that your first contact with the ground starts just where the ball is and then beyond. So any divot or contact with the ground is happening starting at the ball. And if you tend to hit the, the ground early or too early, it's probably an early release. And then you would tend to play the ball slightly more back in the stance. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, uh, you know, with the driver, uh, typically the driver even requires a different check than what you play, excuse me, what you play with the irons. And that would probably be a driver setup or shaft issue. Uh, the shaft could be too stiff uh, or have the kick point in the wrong spot. Uh, if the driver's too stiff, uh, the, the problem is the shaft's not going to help you as far as uh, the we want the shaft flexing this way at impact. If a shaft's too flexible, what it does, it does that too much and it goes left. Uh, but I would be checking your setup and seeing if there's differences there. And the fact that the driver uh, doesn't, it could be also ball position. If you have the driver's ball position, uh, not enough forward. So if it's if tended to be a little bit inside the heel, the club's not going to be quite squared up yet or closing as it is with other clubs. 
Also check your alignment. You want to make sure that you're getting aligned uh, properly. In your, in your case, if you're hitting a draw, uh, you're probably setting up a little bit to the right of target. Uh, or it's your path is always from inside, and that's why you do it. But with the driver, it may be that you set up slightly different. And so that would be something uh, also that I would be looking at to see, you know, what it is you need to do. And so that, that's, uh, again, uh, you could also be looking at the club face issue. If you're drawing the irons, uh, the club face is then closed relative to your path. And so that's a reason uh, if the driver isn't closed relative to the path, then it's some characteristic with the club head. Uh, and, and drivers are, can be really tricky. There's a ton of, there's a ton of settings. Uh, this is a Callaway driver, but there's a ton of settings in here. And they do make a difference as well as weight options. So I have a, the option to slide the weight around here. So you might look at what loft you have uh, as well. Uh, but there's a lot of options there. So you want to just see uh, that if you hit another driver, if you would hit it, uh, if it would draw or not. Hey, Pedro. I have flatter swing and low ball flight. It hurts me when I'm trying to stick the green with other than a wedge. Trying to hit steeper makes me come over the top. I use setup for impact. Okay. So flat or swing will impact trying to stick the green. Yeah, I would be interesting. I would be looking to see there uh, where on the club face you're making contact. Um, if you do make contact with the ground, a lot of people um, are have a lower ball flight because they're hitting mostly low on the face of the club. So we really need to see that instead of trying to make a divot, I would be trying to make sure that that grip is leading the club head through impact. And then that you're making contact with the ground, but not necessarily a divot. The divot would normally come in uh, because of the impact with the club, except the wedge uh, will make a bigger divot because basically when the club make face makes contact with the ball, it gets driven downward. And so that's on the Tuttleman website. He explains that, but he's done a, he's one of the top golf scientists for golf shafts and balls and stuff like that. But when, so if the club's going along, you might make a practice swing and make no divot, but you feel a little bit of contact with the ground, you make the same swing and hit a ball, and then there's a little divot. So don't try to make a divot, uh, but try to get it brushing along deep enough that you're making contact on the middle of the face instead of low on the face. I would expect possibly that you're a little bit, have the club uh, head coming up into the ball, uh, and that would be an issue. You can write in, uh, if you're making divots at all on your shots, uh, and if the ball tends to draw or fade. Hey, Bobber, good to see you on here. When choking down, yeah, um, choking down will uh, tend to, because the club's gonna play shorter, if you choke down a lot, you would see uh, the club would be a little bit more toe deep. So choking down, uh, would actually make the club play a little bit flatter. So uh, if you have an upright, a club that's very upright, so the heat, the toe is sitting up in the ground, uh, you can make it play flatter by gripping down. But it does change also the swing weight and the characteristics there. So I wouldn't grip down too much, but uh, it would depend on the fitting, how the club fits, and uh, but it will definitely make it play a little bit flatter in that case. And so, uh, and that's something uh, that I'll talk about a little bit is that people ask me all the time, I tend, my clubs are about a half inch longer standard and I tend to cut to grip slightly shorter, probably a half an inch. And I do that on purpose. I've just always, I've never liked grip, hold the grip all the way at the top here. Uh, so 
I always had a little bit of the hand hanging out here. I've seen people do that. I don't like that. So I'll grip all the way down. So if you can see the grip here. So you see these rings. I'm gripped actually. I'm holding it actually. See if you can see that there. So it's there's a little bit of room here at the end. And so that's why I will get the, the clubs made that way a little bit longer. And so on my website, uh, when I, what you'll see, uh, what I'm trying to do, and on YouTube, you see all, you'll see the drills, and you can see that I'm going through these drills. And as to the question before, um, over the top is a problem of sequencing, as, as well as learning to deliver the club. So we're trying to deliver the club so that the grip is going to lead the club head through impact. And that has the advantages of when I do that, the grip's leading and I continue turning, rotating my body through impact, you'll see the club head is very shallow through impact. And that's what we're looking at, it's very shallow and the club face stays more square through impact and the path is straighter. So you have three huge advantages by improving your impact and setup for impact puts you in a position at setup to make you or allow you to be able to work on impact more easily because we don't have to compensate for the setup issues and grip issues that you have in conventional golf. We're able then to concentrate more on working on impact. So most of, of what I do, I get you set up in a position that makes it easier. Golf's still not going to be a piece of cake that you go out and shoot under par every day. Uh, but we want to make it easier and so that you have more success and hit more great golf shots. And I want to put you in a position where we can spend our time, which I do in the schools that I teach as well, that we're spending a lot of time trying to make a great impact. And so if you start hitting a ball properly here with the grip leading through, your shots will have more spin on them. If the ball flight's too low, move the ball a little bit forward in the stance. And that's something I may not have mentioned uh, when I talked about the question earlier from Pedro is that the, the ball a little bit forward and then getting the club moving through properly will give a little higher ball flight and more spin. Hey, Tony. Yeah, exactly what I just said. So... Tony Better Golf 72 is Tony Griffin. He's my master instructor up in Sanford, North Carolina. He does a great job. He just shot his age again uh, the other day, which is getting maybe not easier every year, but he's 65 now. And uh, I guess it doesn't get easier every year, but he makes it look easy. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're all trying to, to get here that we can get the body to the impact position before the club gets there. And so that's a big thing that we need. We need to get the body in a position so that we can move the clubs through with the hands not needing to be active. Most people, because of their alignment, I talked about this yesterday a little bit, one of the biggest problems I see is people lined up. So if the target line is here, people are lined up to the right and now to hit the ball to the target, they have to compensate and try to close the club face. And that's how they're getting the ball to the target. That's an over-exaggeration of what I'm showing there, but they're closing the club face and to get the ball. So the ball is going to the left. But, of course, to be consistent doing that is just not going to be possible. So we want to really uh, take away these things you have to compensate for. So get you lined up. Properly. And in a lot of cases, once we get somebody lined up properly, I'll even get them a little bit open, uh, then they'll stop doing that immediately. So I had a lesson with a gentleman in Cincinnati uh, last year, and uh, his whole thing was aim to the right and flip the hands. So with him, I got him lined up right, and within two shots, he was hitting the ball better than he'd hit in years. And that's fantastic. I mean, that's what it's about the fastest improvement possible. And that's, that's what I want to do. And, you know, 
and with some people it takes you know a couple other steps and and that's what i do and that's what i've done for a long time is figure out how to find the simplest cure the simplest fix instead of spending years wasting our time doing the wrong things and, and practicing the wrong things without success so even if you're following my method if you're not having success and if you're a member hey come on send me a video let me help you because a lot of times i look at a video in, in five seconds i know what you need to do and then i'll show you on video and then you're on your way to playing better golf and uh, people have an idea they have to exactly match the grip they see me using i don't want that i want you to find the grip you're comfortable with and let's see if the ball goes straight if the ball is going to the left or right we'll make adjustments and and get it so that when you move it matches your natural timing and swing instead of saying hey come on work on it for six months and don't play golf and do drills and uh you know i just don't i don't think many people want that i think you want to go on the golf course and play better and not have to mess with that stuff and that's that's the goal do some simple drills to reinforce the swing we could always and should be working on making impact as as perfectly as possible and the people that put a lot in get a lot out like tony he he uh improved tremendously and 500 par the other day on the par 70 is 65 and so shot his age and he's done it four or five times now so it's pretty amazing so yeah bob or the right hand grip position and if you look at uh you can see the grip video on YouTube, uh, but because the left hand, so the leading hand is on the club, I'm just going to slide. I'm just gonna see that you can see this right. I don't have light back there really. So I slide the hand in till I feel it under the grip. It's like, kind of like a trigger finger here also. Let me see. So you see that? I just feel where that's under the grip. And then the hand, so the trailing hand's fitting against the thumb here. And I feel where the hands fit comfortably together. So if you look at it from here, it looks like that. And it's in line. It actually feels, though, and a lot of people make the mistake, I think, of trying to force the hand. So I'm going to move in a little closer. Of trying to force the hand. Let me see if I can get some light there. So of trying to force it deeper into the palm. So trying to put it way in there. And then the problem you see my left thumb here, you see my left thumb, it can't fit in. So I want to fit it. So if you look here, you see how the trailing hand is fitting comfortably with the thumb of the lead hand. So it's, so it's feeling comfortable. And then I do an overlap here, uh, which I prefer, but, but it's just going in so I'll just put in it in here, find the position where it's comfortable and where I still have this alignment that puts it on the same plane. But there, there is some wiggle room there of being under. I see some people under too much and some people too much on top. So you really kind of have to look at it there and see, you know, what. Oh, sorry, it was Martin. Okay. So yeah, with so with the trailing hand, and I have the single plane grip video is on uh, my YouTube channel. So you can look at that, and but it's really just getting them to fit together comfortably, by making sure that we're on the same plane, at least to the elbow of the trailing arm, and then uh, that they fit together, that they fit together comfortably. So it's in, it's in there. It's on plane. You can see also, you'll see here when we talk about a non rotational position so that my wrist doesn't have to rotate in order to square the club face. It's kind of like a hammer hitting a nail. That's the position there. And that's where we need to go with that. So, and as you're working on this, I like to have a routine. And so you'll see. In my setup for impact system, you'll see the 
step-by-step uh, -step system. It's a seven-step learning program to get you started. And the first thing that I'm talking about is getting the hands set on the club properties. So step one is grip, and you'll see me looking at my hand orientation here, and then I'm putting the trail hand on. I'm going through my setup routine as part of step number two, and we're just going step by step through. And I like people to write down and make their own routine. I'm checking my alignment, my ball position, my stance width, and getting set up, and a whole part of the routine. You can see it here on the YouTube channel. Those who want to support, uh, sign up to be a member on the website. It also allows you to send in videos for my review. Plus, you can access my new feature, which is the 21 practice sessions which uh, they're not done yet. I have six done. I think the seventh and eighth should be uploaded uh, today or the seventh probably will be uploaded today, uh, which is going to be putting. And then the eighth will be chipping, but we're going through the entire swing with practice sessions, how I would work at home. And you can also do the same thing on the golf course. Hey, Joy of Piping, how are you? So can you show a slow motion of your right arm holding? Sure. So as we're, and I think this is one of the things uh, for people, especially who have copied Mo Norman's swing, um, on the back swing, the as we're going back, really the right arm, you see, the right arm just starts folding immediately out of the way. So even, even as I'm going back here, maybe the first few inches not, but it's also starting. I start with the right arm bent. I don't like this, starting with the arm straight. I think people get locked out there. I think uh, that it's a lot easier if you're starting with it bent and we start out, it's already bent, and then it folds going up. And it's staying fairly here in front of my side or my hip uh, in the same direction. So it's there. And then it comes back through the same area. And that's drill number three in my program has you also doing that. As we cock the wrist, the arm is folding it's folding out of the way and then it comes down and it's folding and then it straightens after impact. So, so that's something. And Mo Norman played right-handed but uh, was left arm dominant to get a feel for it. If I pretend like I'm a lefty here and get set up that way, what's really interesting, I'm right arm dominant. So in a left-handed swing, you see what happens here. The trailing arm, for me, it just goes, it goes right out of the way. And so I think that's part of the issue people have with the trailing arm is that they're right arm dominant. And so uh, they get a little bit caught up in the right arm going the wrong way. You get the flying elbow and stuff like that because they're controlling it that way. What I like people to do, control it with the body. So it's the body turn that's taking the club back as can we cock the wrist. If you have an issue with it, then you have to do the drills uh, to train the trailing arm what needs to be done. Yeah, with the Mo Norman swing, yeah, I mean, uh, that's the issue is that exactly copying another person makes it really difficult. Uh, you know, that, that's what I see. I think it's a good concept. Obviously, Mo was incredible. I had the great fortune of meeting him and being able to learn a lot from him and what he did. And I also learned what doesn't work for me. And most of the people that I see trying the method, uh, when I work with them, I have a lot of them come to my schools and for private lessons who have tried it in the past as I did. And I was pretty good at it, uh, but there's some things like keeping the feet planted and, and the leading knee bent, trying to keep it bent. And there are actually a lot of them are finished. I see instructors teaching it who are actually finishing the swing like that. 
and then at the very end they come up. Uh, to me, it's just, you know, uh, it's, it's not going to work very good for most people based on my experience. So, um, clubs have been fitted but tend to hit more towards the toe. Um, if you're hitting towards the toe and the clubs do fit, I would, the first thing I'd be looking at is to see if there's more dirt on the toe of the club. And that would say that the clubs are a little bit too flat. So if you were fitted, uh, normally you should have hit uh, balls from a live board, uh, which would show exactly where it's marking. So one thing you could do uh, is hit off of a, if you have a piece of plexiglass that's strong enough and you find a level surface that you can hit uh, some shots off, make sure your feet, if it's raised up too much, that your feet are about the same height. So, so if it's raised up too much, that would affect it. But then you put a piece of electrical tape on the bottom and you hit some shots. And if you see that it's marking mostly here uh, towards the toe, then it's a lie angle issue. So that would be a reason. And, and if that's making contact with the ground, that impact, so if impact is like that, that's one of the reasons that you're hitting on the toe is because that's where you can make the best contact. The, the center of the club face is up in the air in that position. That's why it's difficult. Uh, move a little bit closer to the ball. Uh, that will help also, and that'd be the first thing I'd try if you are hitting off the toe of the club. Uh, move yourself in a little bit. You might notice, for those of you that watched, uh, have seen me hit balls, uh, that, that when I'm set up, the, the ball's closer to the heel of the club. And part of the reason for that is the club's actually bending, so the head is bending down this way, coming into impact, so the shaft droop. And you see a lot of people, uh, good players, who do that. It's really just compensating in advance for the fact that the club's not straight at impact, so it's bent down. Try to get yourself, so find out where you can stand and make your swing and actually hit it on the heel of the club. Then you'll know you're a little bit too close. Also, what I'll do in teaching is make some swings and have people uh, measure where they make a divot. So if I made a swing here, uh, and I'm outside, I can see, or here I can see, I can see where my club contacts the ground, and then I could measure from here to the toe line and say, well, that's my exact distance from the ball that I need. I have a lot of people I've taught uh, with the trying to copy Mo Norman, and uh, even the other, uh, the other direction, Bryson DeChambeau, uh, but with Mo, they're trying to stand a certain distance from the ball, say 26 inches with a six iron. And what I'll do is I say, oh, let's just go away and to the side, off to the side. I just want you to see a setup, keep your feet in the same position, make some swings, and let's just see where you can make a nice divot without really thinking too much about it. Just swing so it feels comfortable back and forth. And then we'll measure where their divot is. And you'll notice they're hit the same spot really every time or the same distance from the toe line and we'll measure and instead of 26 inches we get something like 22 or 23 inches so they're trying to force themselves to hit a ball that's three or four inches farther away from them than what their natural swing would what, what would work for their natural swing so uh really for me it's a simple fix move closer or find I swing and it feels comfortable. I'm trying to swing, keep my head level, my hips level as possible, swinging through. And then from there, see where does my club contact the ground? And that's how I find the distance from the ball. Yeah, Tony, uh, yeah, obviously the, the especially pitching, I think, uh, obviously we cover chipping in our schools, uh, and Tony uh, does a great job uh, with that, and, and uh, with this, in the schools we're covering uh, chipping as well, but ball striking drill number one, we're just doing this, but because of the setup and we're setting up on our impact plane, it's a lot easier to make great contact on the wet shots and the shots around the green, uh, chip shots, uh, everything. And a lot of people conventionally are already chipping here in the same 
set up for impact swing uh, setup that we teach. So they're set up already here. And so I teach people to chip in this position and pitch in this position. So there's really not much of a different ball position. Obviously, for chipping is a little bit farther back, uh, but yeah, it's the drills. They're all here on YouTube, so you can get started there. Uh, and uh, if you really want to speed things up, uh, Tony and I should be doing a school if all things work out with this virus starting uh, May 30th to June 1st in Sanford, North Carolina. So a three-day learn and play school. That information is on the website, learninggolf.tv. Uh, hopefully we can do it then. We already have a few people signed up, so there's room for a couple more. So check that out. And... Yeah, joy of piping. Yeah, if if uh, if you're out playing on the golf course and the ball's going left uh, a lot and you're missing fairways to the left, then yeah, it makes sense to line up a little bit to the right. Uh, if you're somebody that's done something for a long time, uh, the most common is to line up to the right. And unfortunately, most people are fixing that or compensating by using the hands to hit the ball back on target, and so. Uh, we obviously we don't want that uh, to manipulate that way. But if somebody's playing well and they're happy with what they're doing, you know that's fine. Uh, at the same time, uh, from if you tend to be slightly from outside in your path, uh, let's say a few degrees, or you're from inside a few degrees, I tend to be a couple degrees from inside, so I need to tend to stand slightly open. Uh, if you're hitting a little bit downward with your iron shots you need to stand in most cases a little bit open so yeah there's there's always things if you, i have people i teach that uh the club face is closed and they play it they hit a draw and it depends then on their path but if their uh if their path is normal then they're going to have to aim to the right and there's nothing wrong with that that's just, if it's consistent it's fantastic and they're happy that's great and, uh, you know, you can drive yourself crazy trying to make everything perfect. Uh, and that's what I see with a lot of people trying to copy another person's golf swing is you're trying to make everything exactly like a person who hit millions of golf balls to get there. I don't care if it's Rory McIlroy or Tiger or Ben Hogan or Mo Norman or, or whoever. Uh, you can't ever exactly duplicate what they did. Nobody ever has. Otherwise, they'd be doing exhibitions and have hundreds of people there or they'd be playing on tour winning millions of dollars so i want people to improve as quickly as possible so you can enjoy this great game and not have to spend uh weeks and years uh trying to improve hey joy of piping yeah sanford uh, north carolina that's where tony lives and uh, it's a nice facility there, and uh, we have it tentatively scheduled. It's on the website, uh, and uh, yeah, that's just south of Raleigh, so uh, it's, it's a nice location. It's going to be a lot of fun uh, working for two and a half, three hours in the morning each day, uh, and then going on the golf course uh, for nine holes or 18, so you have an option to play the, the complete 18 or nine holes if somebody's frustrated with their play, then uh, we'll talk about uh, after that nine holes, I'll go with whoever wants to, or Tony and I will work with them uh, an additional hour or so uh, afterwards. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. And I think it's really important to be able to get out on the golf course with an instructor where we can give you advice on all different types of shots because the golf's really not played on the range, and I think a lot of people spend way too much time on the range. Uh, and once you have a clear concept of what you need to do in your golf swing, which we will do, uh, we will give you that. Then we go on the golf course and we work on it there because that's where the game is played. That's how I became really good at golf is I practiced when I wasn't allowed to go on the golf course because it was a tournament or something. And then... Uh, I went on the golf course and I played, 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 played. And uh, as long as you have a concept of what you need to be working on, 
and you know when things go off, why the ball is going to the left or right, then uh, we can fix it. So I want to thank you all for watching today. And as always, uh, any questions or comments, put them you know, in, in the box or send me a message. Uh, subscribe here on YouTube, please. It helps a lot. And uh, visit learninggolf.tv for more information about my offerings. My membership is very inexpensive. It's $50 off for the lifetime membership now. Uh, it's, it's way less than what most people charge. It gives you lifetime access. The lifetime membership is only $99.98 now. And it allows you to send in videos to the free B1 Golf app. You can find all the school's information there as well. And I, I really hope that uh, you enjoy the show. I'm going to try to tomorrow put it up in the morning. Uh, what time? But probably 12 noon tomorrow, uh, I will be doing a another live golf tips show. So if you have any questions, come back, uh, tell your friends, and I love helping people play better golf. Thank you very much. Stay safe and have a great day.